Hello. Good afternoon. Hello, William. Um, so as always, uh, if you guys could confirm the audio is going through fine. Um, always start. I would appreciate that. And then I'll go straight into business. Check everything here. Good. Thank you. So, uh, let me get a quick recap here of the topics for today. Uh, added all that to the stream. And I forgot to copy it somewhere. Click here and... Let me check here. Okay, so the idea is that today we review um, some of the past topics regarding what we've been building on this FPS shooter made in quantum. So a uh, quick recap here, it will be client-side prediction, snapshot interpolation in general, so answering questions about that and, and, and what these topics are. and perhaps showing a bit how we did all this. Uh, but we have new stuff, so we have um, a lot of updates to the animated character, and we're interpolating more data with snapshot interpolation and a lot of little details about presenting this as a playable demo. Uh, we added character stats with health, uh, a few events for hits and, and when someone is killed, including death animation, respawning, teleporting there, and making sure this all feels good. Because what I want to do is I actually want to play test with the audience. So let's see how that goes. I hope to have a few people around to do this test. And we shall, I shall share the, the, um, the build soon here. But before that, let's so let's let's take a look at what we have here. So let me change this. I think the other side is better because we can we see uh, the inspector better. So if you guys can see here, we I added the same um, scene layout as we have on Fusion's simple FPS. So I borrowed all the assets from that sample. I modified all of these to have the quantum corresponding data in them. So this is a quantum static box collider. I think the floor and walls, they are using, oh, this is a, a normal, this is a normal um, Unity Mesh collider. Floor. Yeah, the floor uses a quantum static mesh collider. It's same for the walls. So this one here, I think we forgot to remove. But anyway, um, uh, let me see what, what William is asking here. So, oh, thank you. So so you managed to do it. I, I have a few, a few things I added here to the interpolation, which you may like. So I, I will comment on those. Because I, I am now interpolating, I'm adding more components to the buffer that I snapshot interpolate and decoupled a few things better. And it, it I still want to update this to use a generic approach so we can, can add any type of component to the interpolation buffers. But um, well, I'm doing interpolation for other components as well. But let, let me take a look, let me, let me show you guys how this looks like now. So. It, it, we have the same moving character, but we have uh, so when you shoot, you actually get the splatter when you of the place you hit. We have a health uh, thing, and and these messages will show who killed who in in when we're gonna frag each other here, and um, it's kind of uh, nice to move around and and find the right spot to shoot at others, and. Let's see how you guys like the the feeling of the gameplay after we, when we start actually testing this. So 
We'll do this soon. I decided to let the cursor in because um, I want you to be able to click on this stats thing and take a look at how the quantum simulation is performing, how much memory you're using. So these stats are all available here. So you can just take a click and take a look at that. So, uh, and also because when you're playing online, um, uh, without if I lock the cursor, you will not be able to click here, and this allows you to um, to quickly disconnect or see the ping and other things. So it's kind of handy to have this setting, this thing here. So I I'm letting the cursor on purpose because of that. Let me take a look at what what was this error here. Okay, let me try to fix that right away. So. Spawner. Okay, so I think that that's what the game was that the game was finished. Actually, let's read. So this should be. I think I should be shall be able to test this pretty quick, so I'll answer your question in a minute. Just test that this is actually fixed. So if I'm playing online here and I press disconnect, well at least this time it did not have an exception good. I'll be fixed. It's not a big deal. This one it's not gonna hurt on the play test. Let me check here what you're writing. So Okay, but you're you're talking about Bolt. Okay, Bolt does that already. That's client server. The challenge here is that we're doing the same thing on top of a deterministic engine. So that normally does prediction of everything, and we're implementing snapshot interpolation and lag compensation on top of Quantum, which is a deterministic engine. And and this is by far more accurate than what you can have in Bolt currently, due to the sub tick accuracy of the lag compensation you don't have that 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 accuracy in both i think both can do i think tick accurate but that's as uh, that's as much as you get get that uh, all you get mm. deterministic ticks using both Maybe you mean determinist uh, a fixed rate. Both is not cannot be deterministic unless you use everything deterministic, right? So a determinism is a, an approach where you only exchange inputs and not game state. Uh, so I'm not sure that's what you're doing. I think you mean you implemented fixed updates over both. And again, if you're doing that, it's easier to just use Fusion, which is already which already has. Uh, fixed tick updates on network and it's much more accurate it has sub tick accuracy on like compensation as well right but yeah perhaps that's what it did cool so this is um so there's a lot of stuff going on in here from from the last time we we showed um on the previous stream and um let me see where I start to show things here. Perhaps I. So if I open, I think the one one good way is to show the snapshot interpolation class. So. Uh, well, this is um, this. So we now we are tracking for snapshot interpolation both transform character controller and pitch all of the characters. So this allows us to. Um, so when you're seeing other player, it's not only the position that is smooth as snapshot interpolation, but also the look, the weapon look of of him. Is pitchy all animation and all that, and um, the velocity is going to be exact. So 
stepping, everything will look absolutely correct to the same position. So people familiar with uh, locally extrapolating thing know that overshooting has to be hidden in a way it is when you predict everything but when you ha use a snapshot interpolation that's not necessary and, and this is what we have here so the animation also uses the snapshot interpolation data so it matches perfectly when the character switches directions you will also switch the animation and, and everything accordingly perfectly jumping and all that so same will happen for the death animation um, it will basically stop moving as soon as it's dead. Um, I'm sure there will be a few uh, bugs into the build that I will share in a minute, but hopefully this will be fun to test. Um, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I actually have the build ready. Um, and I will, push this build somewhere so we can play test as the first thing. Let me do that then. Just a few seconds. So Drag and drop this build here. Okay, uploading. I'll share in a minute. So let's see. So let's just start with this build. Just, just uh, check it. Less than a minute to upload it. Okay, it's uploaded. Let me get the link here to share. Okay. I'll delete this later after the, the stream, but uh, okay. You guys can download this build from the link and um, Here's, I'm gonna show on the stream what you have to do after you download this. So you will have, you'll have this folder here if you unzip it. Oh, this is the wrong build. Let me get the right, the IL to CPP build. So this is the one you guys will see. Um, execute the, Execute the, the binary, and you get this menu screen here. So let me take my face out of the way. I'll put my face in front of quit game. That's not necessary to be seen all the time. So um, perhaps I should know there are a few other things that will show up. So let me reduce the size of my, my, my size. So guys can still see what will be shown around here. Okay, that's good. Um, so make sure to write down your a nickname here. So, and um, suggestion is keep this build, but choose the region Europe when testing. So you, I think Quantum 3, we only have, um, we only support region Europe for now. So try to join this. Then, then you can just press quick play. Perhaps I'll do a private room afterwards, but um, I will start here with quick play and I'll wait 
to see it uh, until somebody else joins. So I'll be just moving around here, waiting for somebody to join. Hopefully someone will do. Jump up here, up here, up here, up here, up here, and up. Oh, I, I hear some shots. So there is somebody. Okay. Plus frag. Oh, there you are. Oh, now you did. Okay, let's see how this. Uh, I'm not really, really good at shooting. Ah. Let's see if somebody else also joins. You got one. Got one more shot at me. Huh? Okay. Okay. Got you <laughs> flying. Okay, so I I the character stops moving when you're dead, so you can do that. You can kill someone in midair. Um anyway, stay there. I can I can we of course we can fix that, but that was funny to see. Uh wonder if somebody else is gonna join. Uh Juan, the app version is the build number that comes with it. So just use that, Europe, and you should be able to join. Uh, I have to say that this should play fine up to 100, 150 milliseconds, perhaps. But it may not play that well if you are above that. So it's, it's calibrated to feel good uh, up to that. So let's see when Juan joins here. Yeah. Uh, so region Europe, I think you got it. So let's see how this is going. Bandwidth, good. I think. I assume somebody else also joined. This is these stats here. I just wanted to see. Oh. Oh, that was Luke. Luke also joined. Oh. Okay. I I'm not sure. Maybe one also joined already. Oh, that was quick. Oh, we have another one. So that's, the, I think I, I, I opened this for only four players. So this is going to be the maximum. Uh, but if you guys, you guys can keep joining in others. Uh, you, uh, other rooms will be created if you do that. So not a problem. So uh, please comment uh, about any, if, if you if you did like it, how how it feels? I mean, do you like the the feeling of the camera and and the movement? Does it feel right to you? Is it easy to shoot? Um, what kind of glitches you see? Of course, this does have bugs. It it was done in just a few days, as I as you guys have been following. I didn't touch this code in except in the days I was streaming about this. So it is it was really a pretty quick quickly done prototype, but uh, it's feeling fun to play already. Yeah, you can rotate while dead, but it is uh, it's just yeah. visually. Wanted to retain the ability to, uh, to control the camera. Yeah, I just was just extending target. <laughs> Q. 
do. I have to. I have to perhaps. Um, ah. Yeah, I have a few glitches on the character controller still. Although I fixed a lot of the stuff about uh, vibrating while going to walls, so this should be should feel stable now. Who is this person? Perhaps someone who disconnected. I'm not the, uh, removing the character if you disconnect yet. Um, another thing I wanted to comment on is. Um, Oh, okay, yeah, so you couldn't, so you got in another room. Yeah, I think there is somebody, no, that person is still playing, it's just AFK, I guess. Yeah. Yes, you were just watching. Somebody else respawn here again. Yeah, I only have I only have four spawn points. Of course, I, I I we have to improve a lot on these little elements of gameplay. But the point here is to check, especially the shooting, and how you see other characters. Does it look right? Does it feel right to play? Or ah, damn it! So how's the score? Not bad. Died a lot though. Yeah, I'll I'll just uh, watch a bit so you guys can look at the movement of the other player, because since the preview, I think in the previous stream the only thing I showed moving around was that sphere, moving with snapshot interpolation. So this is the first time you guys are actually seeing how the movement looks with the snapshot interpolation. So I'm not predicting this character. I'm just uh, interpolating the data that comes from verified frames. And it looks spot on. You, you, you won't get any, you, even the rotation, the look, mouse look, it's smoothed out and accurate with the interpolation timing. So it should feel perfect. So you should see it perfectly. And, and when we shoot, we shoot at what we see, and that's going to match what the actual simulation computes due to the proper lag compensation implementation, which is even sub subtick accurate. So uh, if you run at 120 hertz monitor, it will fit that kind of rate. So yeah, and this is the first time I think, uh, yeah, if I remember right, the last time it was still just the moving sphere. So this is how proper snapshot interpolation looks like. You don't get overshoots. And um, there are some uh, little quirks in the animation because this is not the uh, super tight animation package. I mean, I'm, I, see, I see here that when you jump and move at the same time, it does feel like sliding a bit. But uh, this is basically fixed in the animation, not really on simulation side. So let me, let me take a look at the questions here. Um, that's that's a very good question, Caleb. So, because quantum is deterministic, you do have one advantage in the, in that type of gameplay. I mean, that you have hordes of enemies, which is there is no bandwidth price to pay. It doesn't matter if you have ten enemies or one hundred and fifty enemies. The bandwidth is basically the input of the other players and yours. There is no bandwidth related to the number of NPCs or anything like that. It's always fixed. Um, but remember what we're doing here is we're building a shooter, which is normally normally uses different types of... It, it has these very specific requirements about, about you have to have a, a tick or time accurate simulation. Then on top of that, you need snapshot interpolation. So you need to see things in the past without overshooting predictions. That's what we see here. And then to be able to be fun to shoot, you need to shoot at what you see, and, this, and the proper simulation has to compute that based on what you see. And on a deterministic framework, that means that on the verified frames, we need to do like compensation, which is the equivalent that you would do on a server-side simulation. We need to compute the shot perceive, as perceived by the player who did the shot. So that's what we do here as well. So to do a horde 
uh, shooter, it's n you may not need all that. You may just use the regular quantum predict everything simulation because then you can even predict the hordes and everything. And, and, and this is especially good if you have physics interactions and all. So yes, it f quantum is a very good fit for that type of game, but and also you may not even need to do lag compensation. In, in that kind of gameplay. But can you, can you still do like compensation with uh, many players, of or many, many NPCs? Yes, absolutely, yes. Uh, it, the, uh, you, you, the, the way I implemented it here being super sub tick accurate, kind of competitive grade shooting style is one way of doing, but the system I devised for this is flexible enough to accept a slightly different approach. And as I mentioned on previous streams, uh, this is really, really just a prototype that I built quickly during these three streams. But um, I already showed and playtest all this with our guys who developed Battle Royale 200, BR200, and Simple FPS on top of Fusion, Fusion 1 and Fusion 2. And they're super excited to actually build this further making like the simple FPS version also on top of Quantum so we, and, and sharing that with everyone as a sample. So this is already, um, it hasn't directly started, but of course this prototype is the first step. And uh, I've already had a few calls with them showing how th some things work and, and they're super excited to take this over and get it to the next level, which is to create a proper sample out of it. And it will come, and, and and there will be a lot of takeaways out of this. So they are going to further develop the the character controller, to to based on all the experience they got by building um, simple KCC and advanced KCC for fusion. Absolutely, the, the the same approach to how to do movements and processors can be done here in, on top of Quantum, and they will create an add-on to come with Quantum for that. And on top, of course, building this uh, shooter from these uh, initial steps I did here during the stream with you guys. So let me take a look at the questions I'm getting. Um, I mean, so answering Caleb here. So perhaps you are not familiar with Quantum, but... Quantum already has shit, a lot of bells and whistles that come with it. And if you use the default quantum way of doing things, everything is predicted, not only your character. So you have client-side prediction for everything. You, you normally call the prediction for performance reasons to not predict everything. But it comes out of the box. So what I'm saying is that you don't need to do anything special to do um, a horde... PVE kind of game. You just use the regular quantum stuff that we've had for ages that you can just take a look at the... the, the. What, what is special here is that I'm building a PVP shooter. So when you build a PVP 3D shooter, you need these special bells and whistles, which is very, very snappy mouse movement. Um, extrapolating even the tick simulation. You, you do not run only the tick simulation to go one step further and extrapolate one step more to the rendering rate for the camera. You do the same for the shooting. So the shooting is sub-tick, it's triggered sub-tick, and, um, and, and, and based on the rotation that you get sub-tick and all that, and, and what you see with the sub-tick accuracy. So it is, that is an important aspect of it here. So because this is a PvP shooter, if you're doing a PvE, you just use the regular bells and whistles of Quantum and it works really well. But if you're building a PvE versus P, PvP, PvE thing all at the same time, then you may, and it is a shooter, because if you're building a um, hack and slash or uh, other type of PvP or PvE game, you may just want the normal bells and whistles of Quantum and not uh, shooter-style bells and whistles, for, to say that way. So I'll point, for example, to the New Moon Studios game um, 
it's called uh, No Rest for the Wicked, if you have seen the, the trailer for that. So that's built in Quantum, and they use all the bezel and bells and whistles of Quantum for that kind of combat mechanic you see. That game is going to feel amazing. Of course, I'm a bit biased, but I really think it feels amazing from what I've seen and tested before. Um, so these types of games, you don't need to do these here, these features I implemented here. But if you're building a 3D shooter, especially with PvP, then you need snapshot interpolation and light compensation on top. Otherwise, it doesn't feel good to shoot at others. So that's why we're going this way. That's why I have this stream in three parts. It's We're specifically talking about 3D shooting and the bells and whistles necessary for that, especially PvP uh, 3D shooting. So let me take a look at Williams. Um, yeah, I, I did try, William, to talk a lot about the things that you need on a, on a 3D shooter. I especially point to the, the first video in the, th in the series because I go over the, 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 the topics one by one and explain all of them in detail. So yeah, it's a lot of, lot of time. It's very verbose to go through streams for that, but I do explain or I try to explain all these things. So um, yeah, it's it's for me. It's feeling. I mean, except for the character controller little grit glitches, we still have, which I'm not gonna bother to fix because, as I said, this is a quick prototype. The guys are gonna take over and implement a super stable character controller on top of this um, for Quantum Three using this capsule shape that we're using here and all. So I'll not bother to fix this little glitch here with the jump and and all, but. Um, it for me the shooting feels good and that's what's important because that's the challenging part to do on a 3D shooter. I don't know if you guys agree and um but again if you have have few questions about how the details were implemented in that uh, feel free feel free to ask now. Let me take a look at how the stats look now. Good stable bandwidth, very 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 good simulation time. Um Predicting about three, four ticks ahead of verified one. Running for 60,000 ticks already. So have 11 entities spawned that. That means we have the characters plus, I think we have five. No, we have to have fully four plus the lag compensation for some of them. Yeah, because the, the lag compensated proxies are also entities. I'm using some memory for that. I, I, I should take a look at this memory. It looks a bit too much for me. Uh, heap I'm not using much because yeah I'm not using dynamic collections a lot so interesting I'll stop this Let me disconnect here and go back to Unity to show a few things. Feel free to keep playing. I'm gonna uh, gonna disable the app ID and and the build download later. But for now, feel free to to play a bit if you want to explore this a bit more. So let me things in here. Okay, so I already locked the download, so who did not download at the time, I think it's not possible to do anymore. And I'll also disable the app ID after some time, but you guys are free to use it now. Let me see if there is anything else I want to comment on. Um, so this is a little bit I want to show a bit about the... So, ah, okay, there is one topic that's interesting to comment compared to the previous stream. Um, 
I, I had the snapshot interpolation applied only to the moving sphere. And now that I have the snapshot interpolation also applied to the player characters, there is a differentiation here, which is the local player should be absolutely snappy. And I showed how I implemented that before. But, but we also have the remote players, which are also characters. How, so how do I do it? the different rendering timing for these? I mean, one I use snapshot interpolation, the other one I use uh, the local. So it's all in the same custom entity view that we've been seen before. We've seen before that does the that originally did for the local player. So what I do at the start is I I I mark if that's going to be a local player or not, and if it's not a local player, I basically reuse the same data classes for snapshot interpolation that I used for the moving sphere, which is the data sources for storing the history of this particular entity. So for the local player, I don't bother to have snapshot interpolation data because I want to see everything with client-side prediction. So I don't even waste time storing a, a, a past history of snapshot uh, transforms. But for the remote player, I'm going to initialize it like that. And um, when I do that, it does check if this particular entity has, besides the transform, if it has the extra data that I'm trying to add to the buffers character controller and the pitchy all angles, um, which characters in particular have. Uh, then this is what we used to do before, which is if it's a local player, this I explained all this on the previous streams, which is I, I use the I use the transform position, the one that comes from quantum, the normal we interpolated for the last two prediction ticks, but for the rotation we use the special pitch all, including the local inputs, extrapolated, accumulate uh, mouse, that if we haven't polled input again, because that's what makes it feel very snappy. But um, there are a few more details when you're teleporting, when you respawn to avoid like a long interpolation that I had, so, so basically, in case, oh, I noticed here that I'm actually doing this and then this for the local, but that just doesn't change much. Um, but here's the, the thing about the remote players. So for remote players, which are non-local entities, I'm going to show the visuals for a snapshot interpolation. So I basically grab the data from the, that buffer I talked about, and it interpolates for me, this is, uh, it, it, it grabs the data from the buffer in there and creates an interpolated version of it with the position I want to see. So, so William is asking how the shooting works. I think, I, I assume you watched the previous video because on the previous video we explained lag compensation and how the shooting is done in this. So I am not sure I understand can you elaborate a bit more the question? What exactly about the shooting you want to know? Because this is a, a, a pretty complex system based on snapshot and, uh, with on lag compensation, right? So I, I, I will I can I, I will show, but I will wait for you to clarify a bit more the question, and then I go on the details and explain it. Let me. Um, Uh, so is Stray Brett. Uh, you know, yeah, Lay Join does work. The thing is that I locked the, that room I was playing to four players because I only had four spawn points, so I didn't didn't want to make a mess of people spawning together in the same spawn point. So um, I locked it to only four players, but it does support. I think it's locked to six because I didn't unlock the the player count in Quantum. But technically, due to the way I'm doing like compensation here, sub tick per tick using layers, uh, sub tick accurate per player using layers, the limit would be sixteen for competitive shooting. But if you do a slightly different approach for the layers, you can do I don't know sixty four, thirty two players, whatever it becomes the limit for the your simulation. Not necessary. Quantum would not impose a hard limit on this, except the maximum 128 you can do. Um, let me see if uh, William, so you have two debug logs, one that shows when players shoot and then one log that confirms that. Um, William, that goes really into how determinism works, uh, which is what we've been doing for this series. So 
with determinism, so what is the, how is it, how can I compare determinism with, um, so this is what we, I explained on the first video of the series, which is what is snapshot interpolation, what's client-side prediction and all that. So on a, on a deterministic simulation, you have the predicted ticks and you have the confirmation ticks. So which are verified ticks. So you're constantly predicting and rolling back. So you can, you can think about the verified simulation of ticks with confirmed inputs as confirmed data from the server in the boat world or, 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 or fusion world, which is you, get, you got a snapshot from the server, which is true, which is truth. So the first log I have when playing online and you hit something, that first log is the, it's when you first run the shot into the quantum pre local client side prediction and I register the shot immediately. So I see that I shot something, I spawned a splatter, that's immediate feedback, but that's client side prediction. Then the second log happens on the verified frame. It's not really second. If, if, you, if you're running into a lot of prediction and rollback, you actually may see that log many times. So every time you re-simulate the, the prediction, you would have the shot re-simulated and you would have that log. But then you eventually get one final log, which is the verified frame. And that's what the true parameter at the end says, which is the confirmation, okay, you really hit this. And what I'm doing in the log is you can see how accurate the shot was on the prediction and on the confirmation. So you can see if the hit point was the same. And if it is the same, it, or how close it, they, they, the two are from each other, shows how well the lag compensation was done. Because it means that your local prediction shot actually computed it very perfectly. And when the verified frame came, which is what's going to run on everybody's machine, you get a very accurate shooting because they two match. So let me take a look at the chat because you guys uh, uh, were commenting while I was talking. So let me take a look. Um, yeah, I just confirm on, on the verified frame, yes. And, and the point of that log is, as I said, to, to verify the accuracy of the lag compensation I have, system I have. So. I, when, when I first predict a shot, I already shoot at the lag compensated data because I'm seeing in snapshot interpolation, I don't shoot at what is exactly at the predicted tick for that particular entity. I shoot at the past history of it exactly matching my character view and it's sub-tick accurate. So if you run this at 30 hertz simulation and the character was in the middle between, that's where the collider is going to be from the perspective on the layer that your Raycast shoots at, it would be sub-tick accurate. Very, very sub-tick accurate. So very detailed in that sense. Thanks for, for the questions. I mean, these are very, very good questions and, and, and it helps me um, tackle the topics because I can focus on, on what you guys are interested in. So let me see if there is something else here. So about layer setup, one thing I did is, I basically used the default layer, layer zero for the environment, and I placed all characters on layer three because when I shoot, I do something interesting. So the lag compensation layers start on layer 15 and I use one layer per player. That's what I talked about. This lets me get a very, very accurate sub-tick lag compensation system. But there are other ways to do. I, I can implement a few different ways. I just wanted to use this because it's the most efficient and the most accurate one you can have. In on top of quantum, of course, Fusion has a dedicated lag compensation uh, hit 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 box box buffer. Um, so because I use this, there is an interesting aspect of it. So my character controller. Um, so here on resources asset. So my character controller it uh, queries against the environment and other characters. So you do not go through other characters, you do not go through the environment. So that's, these are the colliders you see. The character controller does not go through. 
But the ray cast for the weapons, which I only hit scan, ballistic can be done similarly, but I'm uh, with the same like composition system, but I implemented only ray cast here, only hit scans here. Um, so the hit scan weapon, let me open the right system here. Still on this, so the um, the ray casting of the lag compensation system goes into the into a player specific layer mask, which is on the in the lag compensation layers plus the player index. So each player is going to have a different layer, and but I add to it the first layer mask, so the static obstacles. So essentially the shooting happens against other characters and the walls. So you cannot shoot through walls. You, the, your shot shoot's gonna hit the wall first in that case, and then it's only the wall that you get. So you can either hit layer zero, which is the environment, but, but notice that we do not shoot against the character layer. So the actual position of the characters with prediction they are there in the physics engine for your character to collide with, but not for the shooting. For the shooting, we only see the, the leg compensated colliders um, because we only care about this layer and the environment static layer. Let me take a look at the chat here. Uh, so is Trey Brett. Yes. It does. I'm not using anything particularly specific to Quantum 3 here. So, except for, I'm using a capsule shape and capsule collider because these are available and they are better for characters. Um, but the, the hits, the hit boxes or hit volumes for the character are not using a capsule. I can show that. And Absolutely everything I'm doing here is possible to do into one. It's not really complicated to do. Uh, three just feels better to do. It's it's just a Unity package. You don't have to go through two solutions. It's pretty quick to compile, and it just feels really good to use. We have this new nice menu that is for that allows party matchmaking really nicely and a few other things. So I just like this. I could have done this in in two. It it in terms of uh, engine features, I'm non, not using, except for capsule colliders, I'm not using anything that you do not have into one. I, I made this also kind of on purpose. You, you guys can take the streams and implement all this. It will work. The entity view is the same approach. You, you have the same callbacks. We haven't added yet the new view framework because we do have an, a new improved view framework that is done on the Unity side that will come with 3.0 but it hasn't been added yet and I'm not using it. And even that one, when it comes out, it can be backported to 3.0. We will not do it, but, but you could push that into a 2.1 if you want. It's very agnostic to do, uh, Quantum is very agnostic to that itself, so it should, could be possible. Let me take a look at the... William, it is a raycast, but the colliders are placed with sub-tick accuracy. So that's the point. That that's what we explained on the previous video, where I explained how the leg compensation is done. Um, but but I can show the code here. It is on the leg compensation system. This is the topic that we explained in detail on the previous stream. So when I insert, so when I go through an entity that needs like compensation, I go through, if that entity is not alive, I don't inject the, the, the hitboxes in the physics engine at all. That guy is dead, only when he's alive again. But when he is alive, I, for each player I'm gonna inject in an exact position matching that player's point of view, I'm gonna inject a collider, a, collider, a compound collider pose for that character. And, for each player. So what I do is I, uh, -da, I get the player. If the player is myself, I don't inject. So I do not add self as a target for me. That's also here. But um, I spawn the proxy, which is the hitbox entity. It's a separate entity that I'm going to link 
the original owner entity to be the, the original entity, so it can be reached back with this uh, component I add on the fly. And uh, here's the trick with the layer. And here's the trick with the position. I get the, the sub-tick accurate position for this entity from the perspective of this player by using the leg compensation tick difference and the view alpha between the two ticks at the time of the shot. And that's how you do sub-tick accurate leg compensation in this case here. And we even discussed about, isn't this like uh, an open vector for cheating? It is not. This Every single game sends the view perspective of the player to the servers. It, you don't need this to cheat shooting. It actually doesn't really help if you move this forward and back. It, it, what helps is an aimbot, and this does not, an aimbot does not need to change this. It just needs to aim perfectly. So it does not really add any extra thing. Every single game, even directly or indirectly, is sending the view perspective metadata up to a limit. Of course, there is a limit here. This, this get interpolation data has a clamp, which is we, we store a certain history of snapshots, of, of lag compensation hitboxes, but not everything. And if, if your ping is above that, you are going to shoot at the clamp, at the clamped max, so you you are going to suffer. This is the same on any leg any compensation system. There is a limit at how far we let you leg compensate. It's, it's, it's pretty clean. I mean, it's pretty easy to do. And if you take a look at the, at the previous stream, I, I do a deeper explanation of these two systems that are used to implement this. OK, um, what else? You see, oh, this was my uh, my to do. Oh, done, done. So these were things I I've done. Uh, I think was yeah. This was done all today. Yeah. I mean, I think I think it was yesterday and today. So be fair. This is what we touched on the previous stream. I wanted to show this again, so all good. Let me see if there is anything else I want to show. So, it's not really a lot anymore. Need to add more spawn points so we can test this better. Let me see here. This was for like compensation for. So uh, there are a few. Let me talk of a few things that are not really good in this example, right? So, of course, you can make a lot better. I think these things are kind of straightforward, but I messed up a lot with this movement system. So I ended up adding a lot of logic to this system where I should have actually split this into multiple systems so use one for movement another one for shooting um i sh i'm also <laughs> in the end after i added character stats so let me show the stats component so you can so qtn stats it's character stats so i added this thing with a max health health kills deaths and um Oh, I noticed that I have that twice, but it, it ignores the second. But um, this uh, definite state machine for, uh, well, I added the finite state machine inside the stat, so it's already kind of messy. So this is basically to say if I am alive, dead, or spawned, the timer to let me cycle through these. When you die, you stay a few seconds dead. And then um, based only on the timer, I move you to respawn and then that triggers the respawn and it's a teleport on the view also so you do not see like interpolated really fast. And 
and another timer, but it's a very quick one, and then we stop interpolating and, and games on again. But so I added these things and but I because I was kind of in a hurry, I didn't bother to create separate system for all these little things. So you see here that the respawning signal, I at least added signals for this. So I added the signal and the implementation of the respawn signal here does the stuff with my stats, with my transform, I call the respawn. I even hacked a fake hit event here to make sure the visuals would re-update your, your health stats. Because when I send a hit to and that hit is with your local character, I use that to, to trigger an update to your UI health. And I didn't have any specific one for respawn to res that the, the health resets to five and I wanted to, sh to update the view. It's not updating all the time. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to use the existing hit event and passing no hit points and no nobody's shooting at you. It's just, okay, something shot at you. It's just to trigger the health update. So this is pretty a hack. I shouldn't have done this. Should have done a proper event for that or, or use polling instead. But more than this, the filter is kind of messed up. I, I added... So it's not only doing custom character controller and a few things, it's also messing with stats on the system. So I am here checking, I updating the stats, which is what updates the, the state machine. I'm doing this from the movement system. This doesn't make sense. I should have done a, a dedicated system for this instead. Um, then I do the movement, pitch all, and transform based on that. That's okay. But in the end, notice that I do need to know the stats to check if I am alive or not. So in the end, I need the stats. But 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 this would this is just reading the stats, not modifying the stats. This one here is actually modifying stats. So I think it's better to have a dedicated system for that. And and then besides movement. In rotation that's done here, I actually do the firing from here. The, the, the whole fire logic for light compensation is all done in here. It's it's kind of small, right? So it's not a lot of stuff in the fire in the shooting. Firing, it's shooting. But um I was debugging a bit, so there's some so in there's a draw, there is a log here that I did not need to have kept here, but it's fine. This is the hit log that you asked about, so here it is. So I'm doing all this logic from here. Technically, I should have added a different, I should have done a different system using just stats as a component because I only care about stats and input. So I need player link to know who's the player who's shooting and stats. And then I would do the shooting and then I also need pitch all to know the, the, the angle of the, the shooting. But once done, if I hit somebody, I get the stats of the target, I apply damage to that, and, and so on and so forth. So, so this should be a dedicated system. So I should have done a system just for firing, because we, in, in a real game here, you would have a more complex weapon system that you have ammo. Perhaps you want to use cooldowns so you can just hold the button and it would shoot automatically. Of course, that would not maybe it would not be any more hit scan and and you because I was making a point here of doing the ultra accurate sub tick based like comp here for when you click on on this hit scan. Um, but perhaps you want to do a cooldown based one like a machine gun. Then it, then this whole thing becomes more complex and you need to add add some logic to the weapon component or something like that. So it would be better to have a dedicated system for it. But of course. I was just being quick and dirty here, just implementing a prototype. Logic-wise, this is correct for what we're doing. It's not the best design. It can be made much more, much more clean. And hopefully, well, I'm sure this will be the case on the sample that you got that will be available later, um, done by the other guys. So they're much better than me at that. So um, I expect it to be much, much cleaner than this no hard-coded things like this but yeah this this is basically to show the the idea so let me uh, answer uh, let me read the question here 
Uh, of course I can, but um, it's better if you ask. I mean, if you've never used Quantum before, I highly recommend you to do. Take a look at the the, the basic two zero video and um, and and check in the manual because there is a lot. There is a lot to to learn, and it's an, it's a game engine in itself. So when you say uh, for development or debugging. Uh, plenty of stuff that's useful. So I'll show one that I'm not sure everybody saw, but um, it's, I mean, in terms of gameplay, ECS, 3.0 is the same as 2.0, right? So it's the same ECS implementation with a few optimizations here and there, but it's not really different. But one interesting thing that I can show is that, so if you have an entity prototype like this thing, which is done on the Unity side, you have this game object, it is this, Unity model behaviors that let you fill in prototype data for the components. The point is that this is used only to save the prefab, let's say. When you press play, um, I'll press here on my entity, which is this character here. So you have all this, but this is useless. So it's even said here. Prototypes are only used for entity instantiation. To inspect the Nash actual entity, check its entity view. So the entity view, Let's me check what an entity actually has. So the this is just the view, this is just the game object that is spawned for the view of this thing. So but this lets you actually see what is the internal values of the entity in terms of the entity index and the entity version. Then you can see the actual quantum component data. This is the live version. So if I'm moving here, that is actually changing. So that's the internal quantum data. But not only that, you see here, you know all the components this entity has. This is all dynamic. So we have the collider, and you can see the actual internal data about what is the collider and so on. And, and so the light compensation data, I can always see the, the, the position buffers. It's been the same because I'm not moving, but I'll just open a few here, and I'll move. So see, I'm rotating, so the rotations are being added to the ring buffer. So you see the light compensation data being fed in here. So this is the actual internal quantum ECS data. There is another place you can see this, of course. So you have the full quantum state inspector that lets you see all data from global variables you have in quantum of quantum's frame and same data about all entities and you can filter entities that have this particular component. So if you have multiple entities, you can filter them out here and see. So this is very handy for you to follow up what is going on on the actual frame. You can have this for a local and online game. You can compare things. It's, there's a lot of, you can see the verified frame or you can see the latest predicted. So you, you have a lot of choices here that lets you follow what's going on on the actual internal ECS data. It, this is being matured, this is being developed over time, so there's a lot of tooling. Um, it's pretty easy also to export a full replay and just watch again the game. So I think I, I've, I haven't done this, so my camera is not going to work. Perhaps a few scripts will even break. But uh, mm, you know what? Let me, let me try that. Maybe that, that would be cool. So let me make sure my runner is actually recording the, re yeah, because I was not recording stuff. I'll record, uh, I'll record only, I'll record everything, including checksums. So I'm not sure it's not gonna break because maybe my view is not prepared for replays, but let's see how it works. So I'll play this here, jump, bang, okay, something like that. And I will do quantum export replay. Um, just export it here. Play. Okay, I'm sure I'm not making a mistake, but let's try to see. So I have a runner local debug. I think there is another runner I can use. Quantum runner local replay. This guy. So let me get the replay file, the one that we saved. 
Oh, where did I store that? Store it. Was in quantum user resources? No. Runtime? No. I think it was. Where did I save that? Search. Uh, okay, so quantum user asset text right here. Let's see which ones. This is in quantum resources, maybe. No. Quantum sample sample scenes. Where did I save my replay? I think I saved something called a replay. Oh, I was looking at assets. Look at oh no. Here. Store. Store my can try again, see if it shows the folder. I think I think I exported to maybe a different project. Oh, sorry. It will work. Just just give me a... Uh, now I'm intrigued, but just give me a few. Let's just run the game. I want to see where I s exported that. Oh, damn it. I exported in the quantum sources. Oh, yeah. I'll just copy the file here back. So I, ex I exported it to a different folder, a different project. Damn, Unity. Sorry. It's... It's great. Uh, I can grab it here. So from the quantum sources sets. Ah, here. This is the stuff. Yeah, this is the stuff I did today. So replay. So let me add that to. And drag this guy here. Okay, so this is the file I saved. Sorry for, for the distraction. I, I saved it at the wrong folder. So I'm going to enable this runner, the replay runner, and I'm going to add the replay data here. It automatically gets the database and the checksum file and all that. They're both optional, database and, and database and, and, and checksum. Checksum is nice when you run the game with checksums, and you can store the full checksum history, and then you run the replay, it should match the same checksums. It's a very good way of finding bugs or things like that. So, okay, I'm not playing, I'm just watching. Look at that. Worked first time, no, absolutely no exception. And I swear, I didn't prepare this for that. <laughs> it is just what it is. It's replays. Terminism is great. So, one thing I I didn't mention actually in the streams, Quantum has built-in kill cam replay support because it can do replays. So essentially, essentially, if you recall the input history like this live while the game is running, there is a way for you to trigger a kill cam replay without, and it doesn't not even allocate because it's actually it's a separate game that's already instantiated. It just copies the initial frame from a ring buffer that's kept, let's say, up to 10 seconds f a bit before, and it reruns that concurrently. So you are still running the normal game behind the scenes, but you can make the view watch the kill cam replay, and that kill cam can be played in slow motion or in normal time. So. We can do all that on the fly. This is built in. You can have all that. And then basically you see that even this game here is already working for that. Of course, um, the view is important that you select the right player for the camera because it doesn't have the concept of every player is local on a replay. So you would have to make sure your view works perfectly for a kill cam replay. But running the replay is built in and you have all the tooling for that. So. Let's show something else. So you can even see the game in slow motion. And that's not going to make the animations run in slow motion, but... Oh, this is a speed multiplier. I think actually I messed it up because the animations are not using that. But 
But technically, you can you can use Quantum to run the replay either faster or in slow motion, and then and then uh, if you make the animation timers consume that information that that multiplier as well, everything would look exactly like a slow motion. Or so let me try with two instead. No, they're they're not working for whatever. So one is working correctly. Zero five the normal speed two seemed correct this is not let me try to run very slow no this is not working better what is the multiplier i'm using okay, this is not wrong right i'm gonna check but it is it is possible to do all this um does he have also controls for the the normal speed here. So let me take a look here. Yeah, you can debug pretty hard stuff. And 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 with checksums you can even verify if the replays every every time run with exactly the same values and this is it has to be because um it is deterministic so if it doesn't there is something wrong with your code. That's doing a simulation. So, okay, good questions. And so replays are built in, and I swear again, I didn't prepare this to run correctly first time like it did here. That was great to, uh, to try. Um, let me see Forest Games. Uh, forest, here is the best answer ever. You have to study non quantum is it has its own ECS which is mature, battle proven, battle tested. It is our own sparse set implementation, which is much easier to use also. So add remove components. This is O1 operation, super fast. It's been in use for five years or more. And it do, we don't change APIs that faster. So yeah, they change their implementation changes all the time, and it's very, very, very verbose. In Quantum, you don't have to do that. So take a look at the docs and the videos. It's it's our own ECS, our own game engine. You don't have to learn Unity ECS at all. It has not much to do with that, except both are ECSs. Unity is an archetype, very verbose ECS. Ours is a sparse set ECS. Yeah, component and filter systems are great, and, and they're very clean to, to use. I'll, I'll just, because Forrest asked, I'm going to show a very quick way of how you do something. So um, I'll create a new component, and I'll compose an entity using that component. And um, I'll create a component, and I'll compose an entity using that, a transform, and a collider, for example. So let's let me show very quickly how you do that. So you create you go here create quantum qtn file quantum's data definition files i'll create like crazy component then you don't have to create a complicated struct with a lot of things you just say component my component my uh, crazy component to this and then you can go here. FP is our our numbers to replace uh, floats. So a number. Um, you can add FP vector three, a vector. You can add a lot. There are a lot. Of you can have add a dictionary. You can add. I'll add a list here. So a list of a list of. Uh, let me see. I'll add a list of FP Quaternion. A list of FP Vector 3 uh, vectors. So you do this. Then go to Unity Bank. The code is generated for that. So um, 
there is no um, and then because it's code generated I can go uh, le let's now create a uh, an entity using that component so you can just go here quantum 3d uh, I'll do a capsule entity let's take a look at this entity it's somewhere yeah it around so it's uh, it's the prototype of an entity so it has the view object and it does come with the collider, a transform, and okay, I'm gonna add the my crazy component here, and then you can add, you can type in the number you want here. Point zero. Oh, caps is turned on, so number uh, dot zero nine something like that, and you can fill in your vector, and you can fill in data in your list if you want to. So here's my entity, and okay, I wanna I want a system to update this this entity that has these components here that I'm interested in. So you can go here, right click, create. Oops, sorry, right click, create quantum system filter. So I'll call it crazy system. Then here is my crazy system with a filter. I'll just say I'm interested in component. Transform 3D. Um, I want a pointer for that. Call it transform. I'm interested also in the crazy component. My crazy component. Crazy. Save that. Done. You have the entity here. So this system is going to filter all entities that have this. This particular flavor of composition. It can have other components, but it has to have at least a transform 3D and a crazy one. And then you can do, oh, here is my filter dot crazy number plus plus. It works. Oh, that, that's uh, it's an FP. So what is number setting? An FP. What FP accepted plus plus? Oh, we didn't. Don't. Interesting. But you can do plus equals one integer and it accepts it. So it does work. Uh, but you can also do if frame dot. Then you can check if it has other components very fast. So does this thing also have a, a physics collider 3D? Filter dot entity. So if it does have a collider, you can do something. So it is it is as easy as that. If you want to actually get the, 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 the collider as a copy, you can do try get uh, physics collider, and then you need out the collider and then you have a copy of the collider here so it's a copy of a struct collider dots then you have your stuff layer material that you can get a copy of the pointer you get the pointer to the collider instead so it's pretty easy you see that this is a lot less verbose than the i remember that doing unity's pcs to write a simple system to move a transform you you need like a lot of lines of code. Here, all you would need is okay. I filtered this, and then I can do, for example, for example, filter filter dot transform position plus equals v vector forward times frame dot delta time. That's it. This is moving forward. That's that's as simple as that to get. So oh, let's test this. So we have the system here. Unity will compile the code. I'm going to add the system to my list of systems. So I have to do that. It's, it's still an ECS, right? So uh, I have, but you can do that. You don't need code for that. So I'm going to say I have my systems. I'm going to add an extra system at the end. And the last system is going to be my 
crazy system, that's it. So I'm gonna execute that. And this filter here with the capsule entity thing, this guy have the component, the crazy component, so it will fit that filter. So I will do something here. I'm gonna split the game into a uh, side so that would so we can keep watching this entity from the editor. See, it's moving. It's just that system running. It's as easy as that. Let me take a look at what you guys wrote here. Yeah, you can. You can. I didn't. I didn't do that, William. The, the stuff about uh, making the QTN files look nice. So I'm so used to QTN files that I really don't don't um, look at that much. But but most people do. They just, you just do that. We're 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 considering doing a bit even better rider support, like uh, being able to create systems from here. At least we have a couple of people requesting that. So we'll see if we do it. Uh, let me see what else. Burst compiler. Uh, no, but you do need, right? So burst, burst actually helps to write vectorized code that will optimize fine. But no, notice that Quantum is our own engine and the internal stuff, we already do really well optimized, including handing lining sometimes and and Honestly, no, Burst would not add a lot. So we did test a lot with Burst for the physics engine stuff we do. And, and our own native version that we're working for, Quantum 3, is as good as it gets. You, we already optimize and vectorize the stuff ourselves. So no. Um, we do use Unity Jobs as the outer layer for our task system. So I can show that. So I'll put the game back here and I'll open something else that you guys have. We have something called Quantum's Task Profiler. I'm gonna run not the replay. I think I'm running yeah, I'm running the game again, not the replay, yeah. So this is Quantum's own very efficient lightweight profiler. It's not Unity's profiler. You can also use Unity's. We, we hook up to Unity profiler as well. But I want to show a couple of things here. So I'm running Quantum in two threads here. And some of the systems we write are very, very efficient for, for parallelism already. So this is our physics uh, systems. Uh, it's kind of like, uh, <laughs> so the whole simulation is running here in basically 0 0.1 milliseconds. So these gaps here are in microsecond level. So you don't even notice the difference, any of that. So that's that's beyond the resolution of some profilers even. So I would have to add a lot more load to make anything meaningful here. But but the point is that we do parallelize really well. If you see the, the stuff from the, from the physics systems here, it does use the two threads really well. Uh, the other is my movement system, which is single-threaded. I could have made it multi-threaded to update different entities in parallel, but the shooting have to be careful. I, I would, I would. There is a way to parallelize the raycasts and do the shooting itself um, as a system later. So you can do that. We have a document explaining how to use our task parallelism. I just noticed here, for example, that I'm using only two threads. Can I? Can I use more? Yeah. I can go to simulation config uh, thread count. It was using only two. Let me make two, four threads here. So I'll again open Quantum Task Profiler, display, record. Now we're using four threads, and it is it's um, the, the load is so small that it doesn't really <laughs> help much. It's it's not really gonna make much of a difference, but you see that even our broad phase is using multiple threads here. So as, as you add more and more and more and more of these entities, it starts to really help doing all this. So I see that one is, oh, uh, William is asking more. So let me take a look again here. So how are you able to access managed memory here? Forrest, there is no managed memory. Um, yeah, these are quantum stuff. So quantum is zero allocation. So 
all the memory we use is on our own internal heap. So it's um, so we're using so collections go into our heap, entities go into our own entity buffers and, and component buffers. So these do not incur into any GC allocation. The only thing that we actually use managed objects is the assets system. So the assets are dynamically loaded in their regular objects. But once you load them, they stay loaded until the, the runner is shut down, then we can unload all of them and so on. So it's your choice. But we do not use managed objects much. So it's mostly unmanaged structs, all memory aligned and all that. So the the Unity Unity becomes a view in Quantum. So you only, it is a passive view that you read the quantum data, you react to events to present the game. So this is what you have here on the view side. And even there, we do recommend you to use a pooling approach for the game views, so you do not really spawn a new game object when a new entity shows up. You actually try to see if there is another one from the pool and you reuse that. And we do have good support for pool. Quantum 3 is going to come with a default pool. So um, even that, and you don't... But, but, when, but when it comes to the view, if you look at uh, the beginning of this stream later or previous streams, we do work on the view code, which are regular Unity mono behaviors, and you basically have read access to the simulation data. I'll just show you one here, so you have a, an understanding of how it goes. So let me see, not the power, not stats. Uh, I think the best would be, I'll, I'll click here and get something very specific. So. Oh, so the animation view, animation view is a good one. So the animation view, uh, I'll show this part here. So when I, I am subscribing here to a quantum specific update because it gives me the, the interpolation factor and all that. So, but this runs at the Unity update level. Uh, and because you can access uh, any of the frames, I mean the prediction or the verified frames and all that, you can grab a copy of the components and read the data. Or you can even work on the pointer directly and read it. And then you can use this to, to for example, in this case, I'm just modifying the mechanism animator parameters based on the stuff I grabbed from the quantum component. So I'm, I'm, I'm checking the velocity of the, of the, of, uh, the, the absolute velocity of the character. I check that proportional to the direction of the character as a dot product, I project that, and that's the, the move X and move Z relative that I set to the animator. So I'm reading from the quantum data, setting on the Unity managed uh, objects here to make sure, so basically to make this character animate. Essentially, this is done reading the data. And the pitch all I use to set the, the look up and down animation that you guys saw even from the other character and all that. Let me take a look at the chat again. No, so so when you say no dots, not necessarily. So there are two institute facts that there is dots involved in some way. So Unity called dots data oriented tech stack. So Quantum is a data oriented engine. It's a data oriented oriented text stack in its own. So if you think about the concept of dots, quantum is dots. From the Unity features that they put into the dots umbrella, because a lot of internal stuff in Unity is, is data oriented, but let's say they have the jobs system, they have burst and they have Unity CS. We do use jobs as the outer containers for our tasks, although the internal gaps is our own task graph. Um, but we do use jobs to trigger the quantum, quantum uh, worker threads. So we do use that part of dots as well. And we've had customers who actually skipped the whole game object version of the view in quantum to render directly to the GPU using more of the Unity dots package, whatever. So Quantum is agnostic to that. It can be done as well. We may even explore that into the future if customers actually request us to do something bypassing game objects completely, because so far rendering with game objects is still much more reliable. So 
we've never had a lot of really requests on that direction. But if it happens, we will do. There is nothing that blocks quantum from bypassing game objects and 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 rendering directly to GPU and or anything like that. We can you can it can all be done. And so, how to write a system that's good for multi-thread? Let's modify that system I did here and make it multi-threaded. Good question, William. So, ah, this is cluttered. Close all tabs. Open my crazy system. So, pay attention to this now. Hope you're still on. So we have a system main thread filter with this. I'll show you how to make this multi-threaded. It the interesting thing is that this system is already um, is already um, modifying only the transform of the self component of the self entity, which is really good. So this is one way of doing things in parallel really well. You you have a complex. This is not a complex uh, <laughs> computation, but say you have a very com complex. Uh, thing that only reads and writes to the same entity, it's a great candidate for multi-threading. So you can do this. System threaded filter. Threaded filter. I need to get the tasks. And it's not implementing this interface because this interface uses Frame threaded, frame thread safe. It's called. So we use frame thread safe, but frame thread safe has almost the same API. Delta time is there. So whoa, is that is that it? Is this parallel now? Yes, it is parallel. So let's try. We only have one entity, so it's not really gonna do anything in parallel. But let's see. So uh, I'll run here, I'll open the desk profiler. I'll record. So you know what? our crazy system is running in parallel, but we only have them one entity, so this is not really doing anything. So we're talking about like 0 0.003 or four milliseconds. So this is four microseconds. This is just the overhead Minimal overhead of a task system. It's four microseconds. Nothing really. Let's let's add. Let's make this work. We'll do it like this. So this guy two four eight. I'll run eight. This is still not gonna take too long. So I'll make this be more complex by doing. Or int i equals zero, e i is smaller than thousand, i plus plus, and then I'll do muta dot crazy dot number uh, plus equals frame dot data time, just to have something to compute for each entity that's gonna show on the profiler at least. But I'm 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 I did eight entities, right? So this is um uh, it's on purpose. I'm gonna show something cool soon. So if we open now our task profiler, it's still gonna be weird. So I'll stop here. So weirdly we still have the updates very fast on three of the threads. And only one of the threads is taking the whole load. It's not a lot of load. It's, it moved from 4, 3 to 16 microseconds. But still, why is it doing everything on one thread? I'll ask you while I read the comment. Yeah, basically that, William. You, you can read assets. You can even perform request queries, although that's not really advised because if you read data from other entities, you are you have a race condition which may be not deterministic. So we, ideally, you should 
inject broad face queries, read the data and cache, and then you do a parallel system to update complex stuff. It's not always that people actually have stuff that can make use of multi-threading, but it can be done. But let's focus on this here. It's still wrong. I'm not, I'm not making the load go through a lot of the other threads. The reason is that this system works in slices. So the filter, if it gets 1,000 entities or 100 entities, it will batch these entities in slices. And the slice size is the minimum amount of work that a thread will use. And the minimum slice we have is, is eight entities by default, but that can be modified. So I can, I can make this, I think it's overrides this slice, slice size, here it is. So if I make, uh, if I return a slice size, which is a property for, this should already split, this should split the load into two of the threads because we have eight entities. So we should, instead of seeing all entities being updated by the same thread, we should see these two threads now working. So let's see. Um, so it's kind of, it's a lot of noise here. So let me stop. Well, he did. So, so now we got, so this top one here, the main thread is updating half of the entities and the other half is here and the overall time reduced by a lot already. But, but, but how to use all the threads? I mean, I'm, I'm being unfair here. I'm, I'm trying to split the load of only eight, eight entities. It's really, we're, we're basically dealing with overhead, here's just 10 microseconds. So it's really, really tiny time. Um, but we can, if we have enough of a load, so let me make not eight, not 16, not 32, but let's make these 64 of these entities that we're moving around. So let's make that instead and run. Then the main load, the full load is gonna be a bit more zoom out so we see, and you see a very well-balanced load between all threads. So now, now we're talking. Because the, the, the minimum load is about 30 microseconds, which is still pretty fast, but it starts to show up, then yay, now yes. You were basically, the threads are getting well-balanced and sharing the load really well. If I was using a single thread here, you would take four times this, and now we're actually splitting it. And another cool thing about this is that quantum, you can set it to use four threads, but you can can make different system, this different specific hardware use different number of threads. So for example, you could use three threads on the switch, two threads on a mobile phone, and then on the PC, you can use four threads, and Basically, you have to make your simulation run really quick anyway, but splitting more on PC may mean that you have more freedom to do a more expensive rendering. Or maybe on PC, the rendering rate can support 120 hertz monitors because the simulation could be squeezed so well. Whereas on, on mobile phone, it is going to run 60 hertz on good phones, 30 hertz um, 30 hertz rendering on, on, on normal phones. But then on PC, yeah, you can support 60 hertz, 120 hertz, maybe even more, because you could you can use more threads. So essentially you can set the number of threads uh, to a higher number on and and then you can selectively on the scheduler, this is documented on our multi-threading doc. Um, you can selectively make different platforms use a different number of threads. So this was an interesting question to venture a bit into multitasking. Um, it's not something that we actually encourage people to do a lot because this is very unrestrained multi-threading. So um, it's unprotected. So we, you, you have to know what you are doing to use this well, to not get into trouble with... Um, accessing data concurrently, because you would get into the sinks if you don't pay attention to that. Um, so the document is hidden, but if you ask us, we give you the link so you can take a look at how to make use of these. But it comes at your, it comes uh, basically saying, here's the doc, here's what it does. It's unprotected task parallelism and data parallelism. 
Do it at your own risk by knowing how you do it. If you do it right, it's perfect and really, really, really low overhead. We use it internally everywhere. So the physics engine has about 26 different parallel tasks going on. Some are task parallelism, some are data parallelism over different entities, but we carefully designed it to do it right. Um, but, so, but if you know what you're doing, you can use this to your advantage. Most of the time, we recommend people to basically design their game using regular main thread systems. And if they get into performance optimizations, they should look first into the basic optimization techniques like prediction culling, um, expensive AI updates can be done scheduling. Like if you have 64 entities updating AI, you may update uh, 16 of them at a time and, and with intervals of four ticks between for each one of them. So essentially every frame you update 16, you do this only on verified frames, not on prediction frames. So there are many optimizations you can do before diving into multi-threading, especially because multi-threading is not is not something that will help every single system. And and in determinism, you have to make sure that the game runs and runs fast in every platform. So it's better to have a well-optimized um, algorithm first, and then you add parallelism as a cherry on top to help some particular systems to run faster. Um, that's more my take on it. You can you can write very very efficient single threaded algorithms in general, and they can still be parallelizable if if possible. So that's my take on this. And um, well, with that, I think I, th I mean really thanks for the questions. These were very interesting, and I could could talk about uh, different topics that I expected. This is went way beyond the topics I planned for today and um, if, if, if for, for you guys who joined late please make sure to check this stream video later it will be immediately available as soon as uh, YouTube processes it because uh, we did a very nice play test at the beginning it seems like everybody enjoyed the the, the way the game played and everything so um, yeah, so make sure to check that. And um, if you guys have any last questions, I'm still around for the next f uh, few minutes. Um, and then I shall uh, start, uh, finish the, the stream. But um, I'll, I'll give you guys a few, few more, a uh, couple more minutes to see if you guys have any extra questions. To recap here, so we, we play tested, we showed a bit more of light compensation and shooting and, and, and how this game in particular was done. We checked um, how replays work in quantum. So we actually ran a replay here pretty nicely. Um, we checked about parallelism and dots and how to create a system, how to create a component, some, some basic stuff for some of you guys, but still useful. So it was kind of a wild one. Yeah, we'll do more streams. So good point, William, because I can uh, already give a... Um, uh, an update on that. So this is recorded. You guys can watch at any time. Take a look at it. We, we may extract, extract a few clips out of these streams because I did explain a few interesting topics in some particular minutes of some of the streams. We may, so we may push a few uh, shortened clips for some portions of these streams over the next few days. But here's what I'm planning. I may... Um, Think about another set of Quantum 3 topics to show uh, at some point. But my next um, my next planned stream is actually, I want to now start, just like I did this one here, I want to create a new one for Quantum Unreal. So I will, the next one should be, I'm thinking about creating a small off-road racing game on top of Quantum Unreal, using the, the, the vehicle package I wrote for Quantum Unreal. So we would give a better understanding of how to go from nothing to to a, a play testable game that we can again play test together here on the stream by using Quantum Unreal instead. So that that shall be the next one. Uh, but I can at any moment uh, go back to a Quantum C Sharp stream as well. So uh, Forest, we 
we so quantum VR we've done before quantum VR stuff with the time of quantum one but we we had a bit of friction with a uh, it was a bit difficult for some people to understand how some things worked but we feel again that now it's the right time to try it again so quantum three being a unity package and so much easier to work with, especially with these prototypes and everything, that we're starting over, and we do have a dedicated VR team as well. So we are experimenting with that idea again, and we don't have it yet, so being clear, we don't have any VR examples in Quantum available now, not only publicly, but also not for Circle. Although if you are a Circle member already, especially in industries, we may... If there is a very good use case, we may jump and do a prototype of something, but we are planning and working to do a few more because there are some very interesting use cases we can cover, but not yet done. So don't rush, but if you if you have anything in particular that you feel is interesting, feel free to uh, give us feedback over Discord, email, anything. We're open to listening to what is important. Yeah, so the, the little lessons is another option. Although we we do have other people to that can also do that, so we may. Um, we, we have a, a new guy who joined our team who is doing a very nice video for Fusion. Uh, actually, a video series for Fusion, and these are going to be shorter videos, of course. I think it's going to be less than 20 minutes each. And um, I'm waiting for that to be published and, and finished. So we'll see. If you guys like that format, we may do something very similar to Quantum. Let's see. Yeah, I also like to do live coding. That's what I'm, I plan to do on Unreal. Although I feel sometimes a bit, um, sometimes it's a bit frustrating when you when you get stuck into something, and and in the end you find that it was something very very simple. And and and, and coding and talking at the same time is is a bit challenging. I think I can do because I have uh, experience. I was previously a university professor, so I am used to kind of doing this type of thing, but. Um, it's of course I'm not coding as fast as I can. I, I can I can code with much more attention and much faster than this. And doing the two things at the same time is not so easy. But I do enjoy doing the live coding sessions, and I plan to do a few more. What is difficult for me is to find the exact balance. To I like to do challenging stuff, so I I don't not necessarily like to from scratch code the very basics, explaining one thing at a time. Although if you ask, I do enjoy explaining one concept at a time. If you do have a question related to something, and then I like to, to explain, but but it's it's a bit slow to go doing a very, very basic tutorial over a stream. Although it is useful for a lot of people, it's not useful for many. So it's difficult to find the exact balance. I am not perfect at that. So but we can always try. So again, feel free to to suggest a few things. I like your suggestion that I like that you say that you you do enjoy a live coding sessions. So I can definitely do a lot more of these. Thank you. Appreciate the feedback. And yeah, I, I plan to keep doing this. So, um, but let's see the topics. Feel free to suggest. Um, uh, we also have, uh, I mean, uh, we have guys in our team who are very good at this, like Luke, um, Juan, Daniel. So um, we, I plan to encourage them to do more, of course, and, and they, they also do. So let's see if we do this a lot more. Okay, so without, a note, uh, without any new technical question, I think it's a good time to finish for today. Thanks a lot for joining. Very, very good questions. And I really enjoyed as well. And hope you guys liked the playtest as well and, and, and the content. Videos are recorded and available in the channel. They will stay there for no plan to remove them at all. So feel free to link um, to others. So 
thanks again uh, and a good evening for those in Europe. It's approaching evening and uh, good morning for everybody west of here. Good night for everybody east of here. So thanks for joining. See you guys next time.